Many of us have written off the threat of a banking crisis. It seems to be fairly smooth sailing up until now, but really is it? I think there's more behind the scenes that they're not telling us and why we should be at least somewhat concerned. We'll talk about it and what gold and silver will do in the event of more bank failures as we explore. There's an article by Semaphore.com that, that really puts things into perspective about what could be coming soon. And it's not just what we've seen in the past with regards to some of these commercial banks who largely were derived of uh, cryptocurrency exchanges and the like, but there is a threat in the commercial space. And that is something that's been a concern for a while, um, ever since this started. And I've talked about the uh, what's known as the real estate uh, doom loop that we're that we're continuing to see to some extent, and that by extension, well, it involves banking, the banking sector. Almost a year after the failure of three mid-sized U.S. banks, and by the way, there were others that were around the the world that actually fell as well too. It sparked an industry crisis. Investors and regulators are once again now bracing for turmoil among regional lenders, but this time it's due to rising defaults in commercial mortgages. The tipping point may be a Long Island lender, New York Community Banks. We must remember that could be the next one that falls. We'll see. It reported major losses on its real estate loans just in the past week here. Uh, the New York Community Bank share price has dropped 60%, dragging stocks of other regional banks down with it in an uneasy echo of last spring when the government was forced to throw emergency lifelines to keep the system from toppling. And by the way, it really, it was bailouts to the bigger banks, which bailed out the regional banks. It's crazy. NYCB was initially a benefactor of those failures, scooping up Signature Bank last year after it was shut down by regulators following a run on deposits. The culprit now is in the commercial real estate market with the debt that's been accumulating there, which is soaring quickly as landlords face higher interest rates and that they can, they, they can afford and tenants after nearly four years of half full offices are cutting their leases. And while the U.S. banking system is increasingly dominated by a handful of national giants, commercial mortgages are still the province of regional lenders. So this is why this is big news. In fact, you know, if you look at a percentage of the amount of, of, of loans that are done in the big banks compared to the small banks, it's really kind of eye-opening. Commercial mortgages account for an average 3% of the assets of the 10 biggest banks in the country. At least the next 150 banks, it's about 20%. Local banks routinely have half their customers' deposits tied up in mortgages for office buildings, hotels, and malls. By NYCB's own account, 44% of its entire bank loan mortgages to is mortgages to apartment complexes Half of that is to rent stabilized units whose landlords are struggling mightily as their costs rise up. Yes, indeed. And these dollars, these costs keep going up because of inflation, but it's also other factors as well, too. And the deposits these banks rely on are a flight risk because more of them exceed the government's $250,000 per account insurance limit. As we saw last spring, uninsured deposits are the first to go, which can quickly leave banks insolvent. Yes, indeed. It's like a flight risk. And so it's more concerning uh, than what's happening last spring. The problem is when a handful of banks doing something they aren't really supposed to be doing at all, which is buying a lot of long-dated bonds and doing it not protecting themselves from the financial hit of swiftly, swiftly rising interest rates. It's easy enough to blame on greedy management and flat-footed regulators. The banks in trouble now 
get there by doing exactly what they were supposed to do and doing it badly. We don't need banks to own a lot of treasury bonds. And we know that the Federal Reserve is doing it through their, their institutions. They're buying up these treasury bonds. Uh, that's what's propping up the whole system. You prop it up too much, sooner or later, that's going to fall like a house of cards. The banks that collapsed last spring's mostly failed because of pandemic caused a lot of things to happen and it's never happened before plus we have the these these cryptocurrency exchanges and the like and in the tech sector a lot of it was tech sector of the kind of business goings on as well uh, that had a played a role here so it's interesting and fascinating what does this mean for gold and silver well i think with with uh, inflation where it is, if these banks fail, inflation's not going to go anywhere. Inflation's going to remain in effect and could stifle as there's going to be more liquidity injected into these banks to keep them afloat. Um, and or bailouts will be occurring. More bailouts means more of these being printed, which is going to do nothing but uh, it's going to have to strengthen gold and silver and prop it up, the prices of them. Prices of gold and silver, I think, will go up. Maybe not necessarily skyrocket, but I think it's going to hasten the day where we're going to see uh, a, a consistent amount of, of price increases for gold and silver. So you see gold where it is now, it's going to reach new record highs. Silver could revisit some of the highs that, is, that it has not seen in the last 10 years um, and, and north of that. In fact, who knows? We could see a point in time where people feel like they're overbought into the gold market and start to make uh, a run to the to silver because they see it as an opportunity. It's got a lot more headroom and investors as well as hedgers and stackers may take advantage of that headroom and can't afford gold, so we're gonna buy silver. In that kind of environment, all bets are off as to where silver will go. So that could all be sparked by a new banking crisis, a massive move almost a panic move in a gold and silver um, and because of what's been going on. They can't find safety in cash because cash is continuing to be inflated. We can start to see a stagflationary environment occur. If people are starting to lay off and we see a, a, an, a sort of a ripple effect there, the commercial real estate market will continue to deflate and that's going to inflate gold and silver prices because a dollar is going to have a stagflationary um, looming over its head, stagflationary environment looming over its head, and that's going to cause gold and silver to thus in turn rise up, rise up, and uh, that could be uh, a proportionally a pretty big move to the upside if that were to be the case. Um, you know, I think that in that kind of environment, it could be much different than what played out in 2007 or 2008. There's already been a lot of pressure, especially on silver. Uh, and so it's that may be the time where is during the recession of 2007 and 2008, silver actually kind of went down for a while. It was only at the tail end of that where it started to really kind of come out. And there were other factors that came into play in terms of supply and, and the market that caused it to artificially go up. Uh, or maybe an artificial is the wrong word, but it was an anomaly, uh, the prices that we saw for silver back in 2011. In this case, it could happen much quicker, I feel, and maybe not necessarily go up to the prices of where it was, even nominally in 2011, but we could see silver easily trade at around $30 plus an ounce if we see this happen. I don't think that's an unrealistic call for silver. Notwithstanding the timing of this thing, no one really knows. Should you be prepared? Yes, but you should not be scared into something that may not happen anytime soon. But the uh, signs are there. There is a commercial real estate situation and on our hand. It is a delicate situation and it could break at any moment, folks. And that could cause some of these banks to go down and, uh, and that could have an, a ripple effect across the entire market, lead us into a deep recession um, and in a deep recession where gold and silver may just pop out and silver especially. So we'll see what happens. It's an interesting thing to discuss, but no one really knows. Uh, but part of what I like to do on this channel is provide you with some of the options and possibilities of what could happen 
and why holding gold and silver is a smart idea, even in the smallest amounts that you can afford at any given point in time. Nonetheless, as for me, you know, I like to be prepared. I like to, I feel safe when I know that I've got gold and silver, which the only way that it can be manipulated is in terms of its price. And we've talked about that before on this channel. Many people have different views on manipulation, but we know what happens in one form or another. And we also understand the dynamics of money and the purposes of money and the foundations of what is known as unsound money, the dollar, which is losing value at a rate now of 3.3, year over year on top of an already eight plus percent from the year prior. It's insane. Uh, and we know the principles of sound money, which have been money for thousands of years that have survived nation states, epochs, generations, millennia, gold and silver have been money. And they will continue to be that no matter what happens out there. So it's never a bad idea to have gold and silver in your portfolio. Never a bad idea to keep on spinning around with ideas on how to protect yourself and your family. Uh, not just with gold and silver, but other preparations out there. So let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments section below. I hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. If you did, please press that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well. And as, as I extend the multitude of gratitude to you all, I want to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.